As of late, you may have been hearing about terms such as NFT and blockchain, and this is a technology that essentially allows for digital items to have a unique identifier that allow them to be exchanged and for people to claim ownership over them. NFTs being the items themselves with the identifiers and blockchain being the technology that is being used, essentially a digital ledger to keep track of exchanges of digital goods to give the NFTs the unique identifiers that allow for all of this. And video game companies, of course, are already on board and using all the buzzwords surrounding this whole scheme in an attempt to get people on board to start buying and selling NFTs and essentially use this technology as a means to further turn games into their own micro economies that allow for further monetization opportunities. And they're all doing this to keep investors happy, chasing trends. You know, game companies uh, tend to be experts at that. And among the companies who are trying to get ahead of the curve is none other than Ubisoft, who recently introduced some NFTs into one of their games, likely a testing phase to see what the reception's like. As reported here by Video Games Chronicle, Ubisoft is adding NFTs to its games, starting with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The company will start allowing players to buy and sell unique digital items. This was published on December 7th, 2021, the same day that Ubisoft released the following trailer, simply titled Ubisoft Quartz Announced Trailer. So I'll play the video and comment along the way. It's just a bunch of text hyping this stuff up. Here we go. It's called Ubisoft Quartz. It's in beta. And all these flashy words about all this control that you have over your items. Designed for players. Yeah, right. Energy efficient, they claim. So digits are the NFTs. So each item that you have that unique identifier for is a digit. Unique digital collectibles, they claim. Because they'll have, say, like a unique number on them. And the emphasis being unique. And so, for example, here you can see the serial number that gives it its unique identifier on top of the NFT and blockchain technology to prove that this item has a unique identifier that allows for ownership, quote-unquote. This is just the beginning. Given the ominous premonition surrounding this that sounds more like a threat uh, more of uh, oh just you just wait until you see how games evolve for the worse as game publishers uh, make games around trying to sell nfts and trying to turn nfts into a thing rather than just make games that are just games what happened to that now we have to have everything be a games as a service and now metaverse is becoming a thing and now NFTs are trying to shove in somehow and none of it seems to serve the intent of making games better and more fun. It's all about how to servicefy games more to make them more monetizable, find ways to fuel their economies to be more like real life economies but more micro versions and have monetary exchanges be commonplace and it's just games are starting to become like part-time to full-time jobs it's starting to become about grind and chasing things that have monetary value and whatnot instead of just an experience that's fun and immersive and pushes the boundaries of artistic creativity it's like that stuff's fading more and more from the minds of executives it's this very nebulous thing this idea of digital ownership of, of cosmetic items and digital goods and it feels more exploitative and more for scams now Ubisoft will have you believe that this is the greatest thing since sliced cheese so here are some quotes that video games chronicle relayed from Ubisoft them hyping this thing up digits are a new way to experience cosmetic items combining the fun of playing with AAA quality assets and the thrill of owning NFTs that represent unique collectible pieces of, of Ubisoft game worlds the thrill of owning some zeros and ones that you really can't do much with as ubisoft's course is probably just going to be relegated to the ubisoft ecosystem but sure 
yeah, the thrill, let's call it that. Our long-term efforts led us to understand how blockchain's decentralized approach could genuinely make players stakeholders of our games. Do not like that idea. I don't want to be a stakeholder in your game. I don't want real life economical elements seeping into my games. I just want games to be games. I want to escape from all that stuff. That's the whole point of video games, escapism. But more and more game publishers seem to be trying to seep in real life economical elements into our games and it's no longer an escape. It starts to feel more like I'm trying to navigate minefields of you know, business scheme traps, or like I'm no longer just pursuing fun, but rather things with monetary implications, and it's all driving me nuts. And they claim they're doing this in a way that's also sustainable for our industry, placing back into their hands the value they generate through the time they spend, the items they buy, or the content they create online. It's also worth emphasizing that as these items, these digital goods, gain monetary value through the implementation of these technologies and these buzzwords and all these things. When you consider loot boxes as well, I mean, it starts to become closer and closer to the definition of gambling where items need to have a monetary value. Well, that's what's starting to happen with these cosmetic goods. And if they do mix this stuff with loot boxes, it might as well be legally gambling. I mean, loot boxes already are gambling, but it doesn't quite fit the current definition. More and more, we're seeing the definition fitting very, very handily. Ubisoft's statement continues. Ubisoft Quartz is the first building block in our ambitious vision for developing a true metaverse. There's the other buzzword that we were missing. Of course, I'll mention that. And it can't come to life without overcoming blockchain's early form limitations for gaming, including scalability and energy consumption. This whole concept of the metaverse, I mean, it's basically just MMOs. Like, I don't know, I feel like we've already done metaverses, but they're just giving it a new word now to generate some buzz. And, you know, unless all of these metaverse ecosystems are in some way unified in such a way that they can interact with each other, it, it's really just kind of a pipe dream currently. But yeah, in regards to energy efficiency and environmental protection, two major points of contention when it comes to technologies like blockchain and NFTs and cryptocurrencies because of all the energy that they use and, you know, the amount of pollution that that adds to the environment. Ubisoft says that Quartz uses the Tezos blockchain technology, which is apparently using much less energy than others like Ethereum. Now, admittedly, I don't know much about the science surrounding, you know, Tezos versus Ethereum in terms of blockchain energy efficiency and all of these things, but... I can only imagine that Quartz implemented en masse, you know, and with other companies trying to get into the NFT scene as well, it is still going to cause noticeable environmental impact. And it's not as if executives care about that stuff anyway. To keep investors happy, to keep revenue pouring in, to see those numbers grow as investors would like it to, they will sacrifice anything for it. Now, as for how all this has gone down, not very well at all. In fact, the Ubisoft Quartz video released on YouTube was so mass downvoted that it actually got delisted from YouTube. According to Video Games Chronicles report from December 8th, Ubisoft's NFT announcement gets more than 95% dislikes on YouTube. And Kotaku also reported on this as well, with a headline that reads, Ubisoft's NFT announcement has been intensely disliked, with a screenshot showing 1,000 likes versus 24,000 dislikes. That number has actually gotten worse since, if we go back to the video and scroll down here, you'll find a whopping 32,289 dislikes versus 1,242 likes. And that amounts to a 96.3% dislikes ratio and a mere 3.7% likes ratio. Suffice to say that people are not on board this BS trend. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see dislikes on YouTube, download a Chrome extension called Return YouTube Dislike, and you'll see what I'm seeing here. Great tool indeed. And you can see from the comments scrolling down that people are finding nefarious intentions behind this. So we have a comment here that reads, to me this is a blatant signal that you're just milking the Ghost Recon franchise for literally every cent while putting in minimal effort into the actual game itself. Not playing a Ghost Recon game in the future if there is this level of uh, degeneracy in the team. Here we have another popular comment. The most ridiculous thing about this to me is that as far as I can tell, none of these functions actually need NFTs to work 
work. Team Fortress 2 has unique item IDs, item owner histories, trading and seated weapon skins with randomized appearances. And this is a very good point to bring up and segues into the next article that I want to show you guys from news outlet Bloomberg published back in November of 2021 that explains how much NFTs and blockchains are these buzzwords for features that we have already had while gaming companies are hyping this up to be a gaming revolution when it's really more of an evolution on how they can additionally monetize their games rather than a way to make games better. Game companies don't even seem to be sure exactly how this technology can be used to enhance experiences. They're just trying to get ahead of the curve while these buzzwords are trending and them trying to tell investors, yeah, we're totally doing NFT things. We don't know how yet, but we'll figure it out. Instead of coming up with a good idea for why NFTs are good for gaming, they've declared that NFTs are revolutionary for gaming and then trying to mold things around that. All because they know somewhere in there, there is potential for millions and billions to be made for these corporations. As editor Jason Schreier notes here in this Bloomberg article, many of these companies have attempted to assure shareholders that they too were keeping up with the Times. Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson called NFTs an important part of the future. Then he added, it's still early to kind of figure out how that's going to work. It is the future, I promise you guys. We don't know how, but we'll make it work somehow is basically the response that he provided. Basically, they don't know why it's such a key revolutionary thing. Yves GMO went even further, called blockchain a revolution. Square Enix Holdings and Take-Two Interactive expressed similar sentiments. But the common thread is that none of these companies can precisely tell you why in a convincing way. All of them have struggled to explain what blockchain can do that is, in fact, revolutionary. NFT enthusiasts theorize about a world in which players can buy unique items, say outfits or weapons, and then can carry those items from game to game among different publishers using the blockchain to prove their ownership. But that's difficult when you consider that every company is going to have their own blockchain and NFTs ecosystem that probably won't carry from one platform or company's ecosystem to another. So an example provided here is if you get a Halo helmet and want to take that into Sony's Uncharted you know, how is that going to be opened up? Would companies even do that and who would profit from that? These are all good questions to ask. The only practical scenario so far is the ability for you to take a unique item and maybe exchange them across an existing ecosystem. So, for example, with Ubisoft, you can make it so items from Assassin's Creed can be carried over to Watch Dogs or Far Cry through NFTs and, you know, the acknowledgement that you own this item that you can take across all of these different games. But it's not as if we don't already have the technology to do that. As his YouTube comment highlighted, TF2 already has unique item IDs, item ownership histories, trading and seated weapon skins. So you don't really need NFTs to implement something like this. Bloomberg notes here, this is already possible. It's been possible for years thanks to save files and account systems. Yeah, this is game companies appealing to groups of investors who don't quite understand the technology and the fact that games have already had the ability to do everything these game companies claim NFTs will pave the road for and revolutionize gaming. Game companies are investing in blockchain because it sounds like it could be something cool one day, not because it has practical applications right now. Bloomberg actually spoke to Zynga CEO Frank Jabot, who recently hired a vice president of blockchain, but doesn't really know what that role represents and what that role is meant to do just yet. He keeps saying vague things like how the underlying fundamentals are positive, but never goes into detail as to why. He keeps insisting that there's something really profound in allowing players to own and invest in virtual items and that the concept could potentially drive cool new games, but doesn't know how, why, or when when pressed for additional details. He really didn't have any definitive answers as to how all this ultimately is beneficial to gaming. I think Bloomberg puts it aptly here. It's a solution to a problem that does not exist. Publishers are cheerleading blockchain because they're afraid that analysts and shareholders will perceive them as plotting dinosaurs if they don't. I'll say again, Ubisoft's customers aren't actually the customers who are just the cattle. The investors are the true customers. These companies will base their decisions around what investors want, not around what the people who are actually partaking in their products, the customers, want. We're just a vehicle to fuel their revenue and we are going to be the cattle for NFTs, this thing that they claim is revolutionary, but ultimately really isn't when you think about the 
ways that games have already been implementing things like cosmetics and identifiers that allow players to claim a certain amount of ownership. So yeah, suffice to say that NFTs are sounding more and more like a con and a fad, and there's something that media outlets have acknowledged and they've been pointing out the uselessness of NFTs in gaming and the lack of beneficial elements, you know, with companies not being able to properly justify their existence and their implementation and not able to break outside of the argument that they're just doing this for additional monetization potentials rather than to actually enhance the artistry and the quality of gaming. And then you've got the community here who really don't like any aspect of this, given Ubisoft's past history of greed, given their current history of mistreating employees, and given the stagnation of their game design, which tends to be very similar in their open world implementation and structure across all of their games. And it's just a bad look all around. And Ubisoft is ashamed enough of the overwhelmingly negative response to this NFT's introduction slash announcement video that they felt it was better to unlist this trailer. But you'll find this trailer across various other outlets who have re-uploaded the trailer and the reception is very similar. People are finding this to be greedy. It's a fad. It solves nothing. It's just another way for them to line their pockets at the expense of customers while selling them on this idea that they claim is an enhancer for games. But just like live services and microtransactions and loot boxes or surprise mechanics that companies claim are the future of games and are so great for games because they give players choice. This whole concept of NFTs and games, it's all sounding like just some fake BS that'll make games worse if games are designed around them instead of around fun and immersion and the things that matter. Or at least that's one man's take on this whole situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Ubisoft Quartz, their introduction of NFTs and the overwhelmingly negative reception against them for introducing this and Ubisoft going out of their way to delist the video because of how negative the reception was. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.